Welcome to Commander Quickies. I'm BZ with the Nitpicking Nerds, and today I'll be reviewing a bunch of Commander cards from Ravnica Allegiance in five minutes or less, or your money back. I'm going to start with the Legends, then go in order from Rarity, starting with Mythics, Rares, Uncommons, Commons. Don't forget to subscribe if you enjoy the content, but we've got a lot to cover, so let's get into it. So let's start with Rakdos the Show Stopper. The stats aren't very great, but it's decent in a coin flip or tribal deck. It's not going to be very powerful, but it's going to be very fun. Next is Prime Speaker Vanifar. This looks like the strongest legend in the set. Check out our video in the description for more in-depth analysis. Tesa Karlov. She doubles death triggers, which is very rare. Seems a little overrated. It's nice to have a token focus on a legend. It's very unique in that way. It goes ham with blood artists. Doesn't just count your creatures dying, remember? Lavinia Azorius Renegade. Not really a commander card, honestly. It's more for modern. It's best friends with Knowledge Pool and Dream Halls, though. Judith, the Scourge Diva. For some messed up reason, this is restricted to non-tokens, and it makes me really sad. Still cheap to cast, and it can be utilized well in Aristocrats decks. Things like Grave Caller come to mind. Basilisk Caller is also one of the best ways to use her second ability. Nikia of the Old Weights. Powerful upside of mana doubling on a legend. Cost is a deck restricted to only or mostly creatures. You want Wood Elves and Mana Dorks that untap lands? Might as well throw in Primal Surge while you're at it. Zagana, Utopia Speaker. And here we have the least interesting legend in the set. It's not cool, it's not strong, it's not unique with an overcosted ability. Maybe this was designed for Brawl, which would explain why the format is dying and nobody plays it. And the last legend, the Haunt of Hightower. It's a unique commander that makes me think of Mono Black Mill. Can be Voltron, Tribal Discard, or maybe even plus one plus one counters. On to the mythics. We have Kaya Orzhov Usurper. We all wanted to love the new Kaya before it was spoiled, but honestly, this card is pretty bad. Don't get trapped just because this card exiles Soul Ring. Dovin, Grand Arbiter. It's off the beaten path for Azorius. It can like artifacts, tokens, and even attacking. Don't sleep on the ultimate. A strong deck can absolutely take advantage of looking at the top 10 cards for the best three. Tomri, Chaos Bringer. This card falls short on about every front. One mana is not impressive for a plus one when compared to like Xenagos's. Looking at four cards is not worth three loyalty, and the ultimate is actually decent but not worth the underwhelming first two abilities. Captive Audience, a hilarious win con that gives impossible choices to some unlucky guy. Most importantly, we have another Fibblethip cameo. A Hydroid Crasis, not particularly exciting. This one feels a little overcosted. At least it's versatile by being a four, six, eight, or 10 drop. Avoid casting it when X is odd though. On to the rares. Font of Agonies. No, they're not talking about Comic Sans. This is an awesome build around that can control the board by itself. Don't forget about fetches, shocks, and mana confluence for paying life. Biomancer's familiar. This card is good. It's the budget, more vulnerable version of Training Grounds. Used to go crazy with Thrasios because that's what we were all thinking. Cinder Vines. A very strong removal spell that sits and damages opponents until you need to use it. Only one mana to activate makes it a great card. I think it's borderline stable. Incubation Druid. This is going to be fantastic in plus one plus one counter decks. Not that bad on its own, since it's an elf, and taps for one mana without any counters. Revival Revenge. Expensive Unearth is whatever, but we're here for REVENGE. Life gain decks can really take advantage of that life boost while also taking a nice chunk from someone else. The Devil. I think of this card as the red version of Putrefy, but it's a little harder to cast. For the record, I never played Putrefy, but feel free to test this card out. Deputy of Detention. This card will be good in the Flicker decks, but it will be henceforth known as Detention Steve. Pestilent Spear. This concept is amazing, but since there's no other support for this effect and since this card isn't legendary, it won't really see much play. Pick up your electricaries now before they spike, though. Verity Circle. This enchantment seems good if you know your meta well. Works with Cryptic Command and Turnabout quite favorably. Guardian Project. Remember Beast Whisperer? Well, they basically printed it again. This is going to be good in all the same decks, although it's slightly worse because it's not a creature. Kaya's Wrath. If you can pay the steep mana cost, it's probably better than Damnation or Day of Judgment. I'm impressed by this card. It's one worth trying out. Rampage of the Clans. This is a weird take on Bane of Progress that makes losing your own artifacts and enchantments not sting as much. Keep in mind, you can respond to a board wipe with this, so your opponents don't even get an army of 3 threes. Smothering Tithe. This is the white Rhystic study, except nobody will ever pay for it. Really good with Gyre Reach Sanitarium and the Monarchy. Awaken the Erstwhile. The zombies don't matter at all and will just kill each other? Use it in Carador or Marin and have all the fun for yourself. Lumbering Battlement. Has amazing combo potential with Karmic Guide or Fiend Hunter. Otherwise, it's a really solid way to protect your team. And of course, the Shocklands. Time for these cards to become more affordable again. Hold on to everyone you get if you're the type of person who makes a bunch of EDH decks. Now we're going to fly through the uncommons. Forbidding Spirit. Put it in your Flicker decks if you want a ghostly prison effect. High Alert. This goes in Arcades the Strategist decks and basically nothing else. Rhythm of the Wild. Now this card is excellent. Not only does it give your team haste, but also a counter if they can't smash in right away. It even goes infinite with Persist Creatures. Did I mention your creatures are also uncounterable? Play this card! Grilled Mystic. For when you love Mystic Snake so much, you'll play a worse version of it. Indictive Vampire. For when you want 27 copies of Blood Artist instead of 26. Finally, the Commons. Growth Spiral. It's going to be a really good filler card for Simic decks. Persistent Petitioners. A new archetype is formed, and Thrumming Stone spikes yet again. And the Locket Cycle. They're all extremely nice for budget decks or commander players just starting out. And that's everything. This has been our Ravnica Allegiance set review. We hope you enjoyed it. Feel free to subscribe or check out the description for our Patreon.